Welcome back to Lesson 1 on Surface Area of Rectangular Prisms. Here we'll find the surface area of composite objects. A composite object is the result of combining one or more objects together to make a new object. And to find the surface area of a composite object, we need to look for areas of overlap. In example 1, we have a small cube with a side length of 2 centimeters that's sitting upon a larger box. We're asked for the surface area. Now the overlap here is the area where the two objects are touching, right here. Now for the cube, I can't see the bottom of it. And if I look at the top of the box, there's that small square that I can't see because the cube is there. So I need to keep that in mind when I calculate the surface area. So let's start with the cube. For a cube, all six sides are equal. So when we find the surface area, we find the area of one side and then multiply it by six. Now since we're not including the bottom here, I'm just going to multiply it by five. So five times length times width. The length and width are both two. Working that out gives me 20 centimeters squared. Now for the box, I'll do the top and bottom. So I'll start off by multiplying 2 times 6 times 5.5. But as I mentioned, I got to subtract off this area here because I can't see this. So I got to subtract off 2 times 2. Now on the calculator, 2 times 6 times 5.5 is 66, and 2 times 2 is 4, for a total of 62 centimeters squared. Now the front and back, I get 2 times 6 times 4.8, which gives me 57.6 centimeters squared. Now the two sides. 2 times 5.5 times 4.8, which is 52.8 centimeters squared. Now to find the total surface area, I will add up all these values. 20 plus 62, 57.6, and 52.8, which gives me 192.4 centimeters squared. Now another approach to find the total surface area is to find the area of the cube by multiplying it by 6 and find the total area of the box and then subtract the overlap off after. Now I was taking off the overlap as I went along but you can take it off at the end if you like. Either way you should get the same answer. Sample 2 we have a warehouse that has an office building attached, and the exterior of the buildings are going to be painted. How much paint will they need? Now besides having to deal with the overlap, which would be right here where they are touching, for a word problem we also need to think about what areas are to be painted. They may not always spell it out for you, so you need to determine what makes sense. Typically, you only paint the walls, so you do not need to include the roof, or the floor here. So we need to remember that now when we find the area of the warehouse. We'll only do the front and back and the two sides. Now for the front and back we get 2 times 25 times 18 for a total of 900 square meters. Now for the two sides get 2 times 20 times 18, but the left side of the warehouse has some of it being blocked by the office. So I need to subtract off basically the dimensions of this right here, 20 times 8. Now working that out, I get 720 minus 160 or 
total of 560 square meters. Now for the office, the front and back will give me 2 times 8 times 20, which is 320 meters squared. And now I'm not going to do the two sides because one side is covered up. I'm only going to do one side, which is 8 times 20, or 160. So now the total surface area is going to be 900 plus 560, 320, and 160, which is 1,940 meters squared. So you can say that they will need 1,940 square meters of paint.